Hello everyone, it's Monster Review Girl, and welcome to my video on monsterization. Now before we get started, I just want to give you guys a quick little life update. I'm going to be going out of state for a few days, so I'm not going to be able to update the channel. When I come back, I'm going to be doing a video on sort of the fan-made monsters and do a showcase with the winner of the poll set up by the Reptile King as the showcase's sort of crown jewel. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the topic at hand. Monsterization is the sort of umbrella term for a whole host of different processes by which men, women, corpses, plants, animals, elements, gods, and various inanimate objects are all transformed into monsters. There's a whole section in the world book called Fallen Maidens devoted to case studies, but I can't find that book for sale anywhere in English, so I'm going to be going by what's in the wiki. Let's get one thing out of the way right up front. Most people who get monsterized don't really want to. This isn't due to the monsters being scary or anything like that. This is because most of the women who undergo this process are, re are devout followers of the Order, and the Order teaches that anything in happen that happens in relation to monsters is bad. Well, not everything. They're perfectly fine with kill it with fire. There are exceptions, of course. Sorceresses may pursue becoming a witch, or even a lich, to improve their power, and there are some heretical religious sects which hold monsterization in a positive light. Still, in the vast majority of cases, it's not a fun journey. Some succubi take the time to get to know their soon-to-be victim, if you could call it a victim, and then transform them with their full consent, but generally that's not the case. So, now that that elephant in the room's out of the way, let's, uh, let's get started, I guess. Now, the most common way for becoming a monster is to become intimate with a monster yourself. Very often this is a succubi. During this intimate encounter, demon energy is poured into the human woman at a rate that her body can't keep up with. As a result, she then transforms. Now, the, most humans go through a stage called a lesser succubi before they ascend into a full succubi. This stage is very short, but does have an article in the wiki. Now, very often they will then sort of view their transformer as an older sister. Generally, a monster will pick a girl who is sort of pining for someone or repressing their feelings towards someone for some reason or another and a lot of the things they're talking about while they're doing this is sort of trying to get the girl to believe like yes what you're feeling is okay none of this is wrong none of your emotional attachments are wrong your order is a little nut bar i can help you the second case is more of an environmental exposure this is less like being infected with a virus, which was sort of akin to the first one, and, and more akin to radiation poisoning. With the radiation growing more intense, the closer and closer they get to the sort of epicenter of the territory. This is kind of why nobody sent to slay the current demon lord has actually succeeded in doing it. Only two people have done it so far, but they were on the verge of being transformed themselves by the time they reached the Demon Lord and were sort of given that last little nudge by the lady herself. So far, in the 300, 400, sometimes a thousand years, the wiki is a little inconsistent, that the current Demon Lord has been in command, no hero or heroine has managed to face her without joining her and becoming a monster. Being transformed by environmental exposure is the first one we'll go into where you can become something other than a succubus. If you drown at sea, you have good odds of your body being infused with demon energy from the sea and transforming into a creature called a Nereid. Oddly enough, there is a way to be transformed after being injured by a monster. Now, Monster physiology can't technically injure humans anymore, at least not physically. It can, however, injure the spirit. External wounds caused by the claws and fangs of a werewolf, for example, would cause energy to, go, to come out of the body instead of blood. After spirit energy comes out, demon energy goes in. In a woman's case, she is transformed into a werewolf. 
These injuries don't cause any pain. Same as with any injuries inflicted using a sword made of a material called Demon Realm Silver. Demon Realm Silver, despite the term, actually refers to any metal infused with energy from the Demon Realm. Now, these weapons, as I said, don't cause physical pain to humans, instead bleeding them of their spirit energy and allowing energy from the Demon Realm that's been infused into the weapon to go into the wound. If monsterification occurs at all, and if so, how fast, depends on the quality of all the factors involved. Now, if the, weapon is, if the weapon is low quality, the energy is low quality, and the skill of the one wielding it is low quality, monsterification may not even occur at all. On the contrary, if the sword, for example, is being wielded by a Dullahan, basically headless horseman chick, I'm going to go into that later, Master Fencer wielding a sword made by a Cyclops, again, going to go into her later, Artisan with the concentrated energy of a Lilim, then even the slightest scratch can result in a monsterification. A wielder of such weapon would leave a mountain of monsters in her wake rather than a mountain of corpses. Which, honestly, I don't think any of them will really object to, because again, monsters don't like killing people. Well, the fourth way, for those of you at home keeping track, is a little more um, squicky or disturbing. If you're the kind of person who's freaked out by the idea of parasites or parasitism, you might want to fast forward through this section of the video. I'm going to put a timestamp for each type of monsterification in the comments, so you don't have to subject yourself to this. I personally am really weirded out by parasites, but that is a valid type of reproduction some monsters have. They are unique in that once they are transformed fully, they seek out to convert others into their species almost obsessively, with the same sort of obsession most monsters hold for having children. Why monsters are so obsessed with having kids, I'll leave for another video. After that, after parasitism comes being converted into a type of slime. Now this is unique even among the multitude. At present, only the species called dark slime is able to do it. They sort of envelop a human woman in their slime substance. Basically, they kind of absorb her. And after some time, they spit her out as a slime, preferably one of their species. Um, it's weird, and there's not really a whole lot of information on it. So moving on. After that comes the undead. Now, the undead aren't any more human corpses reanimated via demon energy but organisms called undead that are reborn from human corpses due to demon energy. Unless they're high-class undead, they don't tend to be the brightest things on the face of the earth. I mean, they stop looking like corpses after a while and just kind of look like really dim-witted people. But again, undead. Ugh, moving on. This next type is seemingly limited only to priests and others who have taken up vows of, well, priesthood. The one who governs this type is a being called the Fallen God. They regard falling from grace as sort of a good thing. Um, sometimes they will sort of insinuate themselves into places where the chief god is prevalent especially when someone has a shaken faith um then they can sort of wiggle their way in and turn this person due to the due to this if being corrupted this way is the only way they're being turned. Instead of becoming a succubus, they would instead become a creature called a dark priest. I will go into those two in another video. After that is ritual. If corruption is what happens when a normal priest loses their way, then ritual is what happens when a deemed heretical sect gets a little freaky. Races that can change human women into monsters have had that ability to begin with. They aren't necessarily the only ones, though. Though it takes time, various spells and rituals exist to turn other humans into monsters. One of them is the Ritual of the Snake God, performed by a snake-worshipping faith. They view the monster Echidna and snakes in general as symbols of bountiful harvest, eternity, and sort of a celestial femininity, or divine womanhood. As they are symbols of power, 
they can sort of... It's very quick and easy for an Echidna or even a very powerful Lamia or Medusa to immediately draw themselves a cult. They can transform others by gathering up energy and then dispelling it into a group of snakes. Then there's a special ritual that's undergone and a human wo woman will then become either a Lamia, a Medusa, or an Echidna. Now, the type she turns into depends on how much energy has been discharged, and that's variable. Basically, it, this is a good one for making exclusively snake-based monsters, but it doesn't really... we don't know if this works for any other types. The next one, eh, this one's basically a little more of a be careful what you find, um, and that's various energy imbued possessions. Cursed equipment is still very much a thing. Um, once a human puts on a piece of cursed equipment, they can't take it off. Um, a lot of times, this is presented with a, uh, with a boon, a heightened sense of smell, freakish strength, or the ability to cast certain types of magic. However, if worn for a long time, more and more demon energy will leach into the user. By the time they notice this change, it's too late. Um, they've already transformed. Um, there's that, yeah. The tenth type is the one I mentioned in my mana video that only affects like two types of people. Um, if a man who is gay or a person who is assigned male at birth transgender is infused with enough demon energy to become an incubus, they can then choose to gain more and more and more energy to the point where they can perform the same pro- where they can shut down their own spirit energy production and become a monster themselves. If they are- if the man transformed is gay or homosexual, they will stay looking male and become a creature known as an alp, the sort of male form or morph. Um, however, when a man- or, well, I can't really call them men, sorry about that. When a person who is assigned male at birth and would nowadays be referred to as a transgender person reaches that point, though, they they gain a morphology that's hyper-feminine and sort of, look at how girly I am. I am I'm a woman now. I am a monster. I'm me. This, uh, these two types are... While they are the same species, they look different enough that people will sometimes confuse them for separate species. The final type, and the most in, one of the more insidious short of energy infusion from territory, is tainted food. Food gathered in the demon realms is thick with demon energy. Out of all of them, the fruit called the prisoner fruit is especially notorious. By eating this, you turn into a monster over time, and it has a moderate, it, based on the wiki, it has a moderate addictive property, so you're gonna keep eating it even though it's changing your body, and tainted, um, well, the whole Staurus monster, which I'm gonna go into later, there is subspecies of Minotaur, can produce a milk that is so infused with extra energy that drinking it would transform the person into a member of their species. Um, yeah, tainted food is something you really need to watch out for in areas near a demon realm. Normally they're hard to obtain, but sometimes monsters will sneak them in and sort of cause chaos that way. Now. Non-humans can become monsters, but it's very, very difficult because they're more resistant to it. The wiki itself goes into more detail because I am already rambling for way too long on this one. Um, yeah, that's monsterization in a nutshell. Um, thank you for listening. Um, like if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more content like it. Um, yeah. This has been Monster Review Girl, uh, signing off.